Well, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. May the Lord be with you this day and always. I want to ask you, are you lonely? This is a world where people are pulling away one from another. Churches are turning on their flock. Ministers that should be ministering, remember, to minister to somebody is to be the servant to care for that person. When a nurse ministers to the patient, the nurse is doing all that the patient cannot do. They're cleaning them, they're feeding them, they're bathing them in, med in ointments, they're ministering to their needs. The ministers have stopped doing that and are now expecting the flock to minister to them, to give them, to do for them and to raise them up. So opposite to what the message was. If you are to be a leader, you must be the servant, remember? So people are being alienated by this reversal of God's word. The love of many has grown cold. You see it all around you. The riots, the looting in supposedly Christian countries because they're no longer Christian countries. When a nation loses Christ, they lose the truth because he is the truth. They lose reality because truth is reality. They lose honour. Because God said when they forsake the truth, he will give them over to dishonour their own bodies. They're doing it. Everything he said, it's happening. You're seeing it. I'm seeing it. It's distressing. And we are no longer loved by those that we expected to love us. Because we love the truth. We love Jesus for his name's sake, for the truth, for the word. We are no longer loved by the world because it has turned its back on the truth. They do not want to be set free. But you are a reflection of Christ. And in reflecting Christ, you are shining a mirror straight back on themselves that they can see their own iniquity. And they don't want to see themselves as being anything but we're the good guys, we're having fun. You're a judgmental person. We don't want you because they don't want to be judged. They know what they're doing is wrong. If you're not doing anything wrong, you don't worry about being judged. But they are so offended by the truth. And they don't want to see the truth. So they're turning their backs on you. This is happening on the grand scale of nations. But also, my darlings, I know and I feel it for you. It's happening with your families as well. Your families are turning their backs on you. And the closer we come to Jesus' return, the more this is happening. But I just want to give you a optimistic, cheering word, something that will encourage you because this is what was said. If you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. So if the world is pushing you away, don't worry. Draw nigh to God, he'll come in. He'll fill that gap for you. But what do you do? You cleanse your hands Ye sinners, don't keep going on about your sins. Cleanse your hands and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Don't be thinking you can sit part in, in the world and part with God and everything will be okay. You can't. The world will reject you, that is true, but God will come close to you. And then there's a psalm that says, that, that when I've was in James 1, but this one, Psalm 
The Psalms are beautiful. Psalm 27.10 Even if my father and my mother abandon me, so even if those that should hold closest to me, even if they abandon me, the Lord cares for me. He is there for you. You don't have to feel lonely. He is there and will be there. I had a, a bit of a dream, a strange dream. It took me a while to understand it and I needed to talk to my sister. Um, she lives about 1,500 miles away, but these computer things, they're wonderful. We can talk face to face. And I told her the dream. I told her I did not understand it. And she just saw it straight away. And I'll, I'll share with you the meaning of it more than the actual dream because the dream was a picture story that was just so intricate, hard to describe it. But basically it was showing me the destruction of our society has come. The foundations, it was a building and the foundations of the building were huge beams. I mean, they should have been powerful, mighty beams holding up this building, this dwelling that all of these people were in. And yet the beams were like, like honeycomb, but more like less, uh, not a honeycomb, it had all of those openings, but it was totally see-through. There were only a few tiny bits holding it together, almost like a cobweb of honey. And it was ready. You could see at any moment it would just collapse. And I'm warning them, we have to, we have to fix this, we have to fix this. But nobody listened, nobody listened. And then I could see, I'm under the building, looking up through the floor structure. The surface looked okay, but if they had stepped in the wrong spot, there was nothing under it. They would have fallen through. That's how dangerous it was. And yet to the side, I could see all of this timber ready to go up. And I'm... It's here, let's get it up. But nobody wanted to be bothered. And this bothered me. And I seemed to float up from there, I'm under. And now suddenly I've arrived at the top. And I'm looking out and there's a, a beautiful veranda. I, some people call that a porch, I think. We call it a veranda in Australia. And there's this lovely big wide open veranda and on it goes my father and he's he goes out and he lays down on the veranda which was a strange thing to do but he just was peacefully going to have a lay down and I notice these two huge gigantic lion-like animals but they were so fluffy and, and cute in a way, but dangerous as well. It was strange because they looked at me and the one on my right really looked hard at me and then it almost rolled over and its, its fur was absolutely, it was flowing and, and so elegantly gorgeous. And this creature just rolled over until it rolled over my dad and had its paws out over, over him, one side to the other. Dad's little head's there under it, peaceful as can be, just looking up at me. And he wasn't worried. And this creature just laying on top of Dad looking at me and Dad looking at me. And then it quickly rolled off and Dad's still okay. And I'm, what on earth was that? <laughs> and Anne said, that's my sister's name, Anne. She just said, 
Robin, you've been telling me all about it. Jesus comes back not as a lamb, but as a lion. And he's covered, he's covered dad. He's protecting dad. It's okay. And I, of course, the believers, or oh, we are already covered. We have drawn near to God and he has drawn near and he's just shown if something's going on, here I am, I'm on you. I've, I've got this, you know, you rest. You just rest now. I've got this now. I know what's happening. I'm in charge. It's not about you. I'm in charge. I'm coming for you. Just wait. I'm coming. Yes, the foundation of this world has been destroyed. But I've got the plan. He had it already put aside. He knows what he's doing. The foundation, the new foundations are ready. They were in the pile under the house, ready to rebuild. His plan will come to fruition. He's got it all in order. They don't want to fix it. They are in trouble. But it's all right because his plan He's got it all planned and all in order and he will do his will. So don't, don't fret. He will come when you need him. He is there always. They were on either side. The two lines were on either side. That was the hedge of protection. They were on either side. There was danger. But Dad was calm. They were on either side, keeping an eye out. And when I needed confirmation, I've covered him, it's okay, don't worry, I've got this. And then went back when there was no need. But they're just off to the side, they're watching and waiting. He, even if our mother and father turn from us and reject us, he is there. And all we need to do is call on him. Draw nigh to him and he will come and roll over and, and cover us because he has covered us. His blood has covered us. But his comfort, it was the most, I cannot ex describe the beautiful softness of this animal even though it was a, a fierce animal. The fierceness was at the world, but the soft, cuddly loviness was on us. They should be afraid. He was watching them. But he let us see his coming to cover us. So you may be going through something absolutely terrible. I know you may be. There are so many going through absolute horror at the moment. But be of good heart, my loves, because when you need him, and you will need him, he is there waiting. And even if it is to the death, your soul is going to be rolled and covered in the peace, the love, and the safety that only our Lord can bring. And he will do his will. So hold that in thought. Don't let this world frighten you. He's got a plan. And he is ready. He has his plans in place. He is ready to take over. He will come for you. And if we are still here when the rapture occurs he will be here and he will take you home so don't worry don't let it there is that initial oh why have they turned but he said they will remember one other thing though even though they turn now they have heard the word if they have turned from you, chances are they have heard the word and are rejecting it and saying, that's ridiculous, don't be silly. 
as soon as the rapture occurs, you know they will say, what just happened? Isn't that exactly what they said was going to happen? And one or two things, they're either going to get angry that it was true or they're going to get righteously afraid and gain the most precious fear in the world is the fear of God Almighty. And once you fear God Almighty, that is the dawning of wisdom. If you're not afraid of God Almighty, if you think he is a lame duck, a Santa Claus, a pushover, you're not going to respect him. If you don't respect him, you won't trust him. So all of those emotions will be there and that will make them easy to be deceived. But if they're among the ones that say, it was true, that means everything else they said is true, we know the end. And they will choose. And God willing, they will choose the right path. And you will have helped them come to that right path in the tribulation, in Jacob's troubles time. So don't give up on them. Continue prayer for them, even if they have rejected you. Continue prayer for them. And you will find out later what happened. But we aren't going to be here for that part. Right? When they make their choices. Now here comes my daddy. Just a moment, please. Here we go. He's So the day's going to start now. It's rather late, actually. He's had a very big sleep in. He had a bad night last night, my darlings. I had to pray earnestly for him. He, he has some issues these days that he's getting older. But 96 and 9 twelfths, He's going good. <laughs> In June, he'll be 97, so God be praised. He's doing well for a man of his age. But last night was a very tough night for us. We were still up at two in the morning trying to ease his problems. But he's eased. God be praised. Now, so that's all I wanted. I wanted to encourage you that things may be going wrong at this point. Remember Jesus is coming. The closer we are to his appearing, remember the more Satan is going to ramp up and attack. This is only proof. If he doesn't attack, you know you're not of the chosen or of the called out. If you are still in the world, he doesn't need to attack you. But if you're coming under attack, in all, it could be little ways, but if you're coming under attack, you know he only attacks those that love the Lord. So if you see somebody who's having a wow of a time in the world claiming to be a Christian, you know Satan's not attacking them, there's a reason. But if you're finding things are going a bit pear shaped, don't despair. Because that lion is coming. The lamb has already been slaughtered. The lion is coming. So watch out for him. Keep looking up. Give him all of your heart. Draw nigh to him. He will draw nigh to you. And may his heart for you be allowed to reside with you and may you feel the peace that he will give you for his peace is great he died on a cross he died for your sins he covered you in his blood and his spirit was given to you that you may be saved the grace came to you that it may teach you to walk in righteousness, to give up all your corruption, 
come to him. So God bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you such glorious peace, a peace that no unbeliever can understand because their peace is of the world. Yours is of the spirit. Smile, remember him, and he is coming. And your cup will runneth over with love. God bless you. I love you and I pray for you all every day. Whoever comes to the channel, I pray for. Those who haven't even come to the channel, I pray for. If you've asked for prayers at any time, I continue my prayers for you. But we also need to pray for Israel, the people of God, that their eyes are opened, that they may see. Hallelujah. Maranatha, come, Lord, come, and I will see you here or there, preferably there. God bless you all, my darlings. He loves you more than I could ever explain to you. God bless you. Bye. Bye for now.